In the last couple of weeks, I've been showing you tips and techniques to write more Pythonic code and we've covered things like set memberships and vectorized operations. But there's one more thing that I think is quite important and that's caching. Now caching is a technique that you can use to speed up your code and it's become really easy to implement since Python 3.9. Now in this video, I'm going to show you how to implement a simple caching mechanism using the fun tools module. And I'm going to show you how to use it to speed up your functions. I think it has a potential to be your most powerful tool in your Python toolbox because it has been my favorite. One of the lesser known building decorators that's my favorite. Okay, to start us off, I already have the same timing decorator that I've been using since the last few videos. So if you want to see how it works, you can check out my earlier videos, which goes into other ways to write higher performance Python code. Now essentially it just times how long it takes for a function to run and it prints out the results uh, right here. So let's begin with a simple square root function. We do it without the caching and then we will implement it with caching and then I can walk you through the difference and uh, talk a little bit about that, right? Okay, so how do you define a square root function? Now, um, let's go ahead and just name it a square root, very self-explanatory, and we're gonna just return that x to the power of 0 0.5. That's really one, one half, right? Just that's a square function. Now, if I'm gonna just open up my terminal and just really run it quickly, I'm gonna say Python. I'm gonna use 3.11 because some of these uh, features that I'm gonna talk about, they are available in 3.9 and above. So you wanna have a slightly uh, recent version of Python 3, all right? And I will do lru.py. Actually, I'm gonna go into the iterative mode as well. May have to go into my desktop. Now, if I'm just gonna go ahead and just say square root four, let's see what happens, it prints two. Okay, no surprises. If I say nine, it prints three. Okay, no surprises. So let's start off by adding our time it function, right? So let's go ahead and just add a time it. Now, if I were to run that again, oh, I'm gonna have to quit this up. Square root four, now what it does is that the print statement here, it gave me the second, the number of seconds it took to run that operation and then tell me what is the argument I use. So I use the argument for, it's gonna print that argument and it's gonna print out the results. The argument is really straightforward. It's a string of arc for arc in arcs, which is right here, all right? And if I'm gonna go ahead and do a nine, uh, 3.0. So this is the input, this is the output. This is the input, this is the output, all right? If I go ahead and do four again, right? It would have to rerun the function in order to compute 2.0. It has to rerun that. And the reason you know that is because this is clearly being printed out. If this is not rerun, if this is if this function is not being rerun, you wouldn't have seen the print statement coming out. So the fact that you're actually seeing the print statement coming out again is telling you that the function have to rerun, uh, meaning you have to re-execute, you have to be re-evaluated, producing the same output, given the same input. So this is kind of inefficient and it's a bit wasteful. You could have think like, hey, maybe I don't have to, uh, if, if I'm passing in the same input, right, you would think that I could implement a simple dictionary where I would keep the input mapping to the output. I said, hey, if somebody pass in four, it should return two. Somebody pass in nine, it should return three. And this has been done before. So why don't you just look up on that um, dictionary and return that back to you so you don't have to rerun this. So imagine this is some, imagine this being uh, some very expensive computation. So instead of having to redo this, and I'll show you an example later where we actually pick an API, uh, maybe you use a request to go into some URL and collect some data. And what if that's very expensive? You're calling a lot of API, but you're saying that, hey, every time I pass in the same input, I wanna get exactly the same output. Well, this is something known as memoization. And memoization is just a fancy word. It's basically an optimization technique that says that if I save the results of previous invocations of an expensive function, then I can avoid having to repeat my computation. I could avoid having to do this very expensive computation if I would save the result of previous invocation given a certain set of input. So if I give you the same input, maybe four, maybe nine, you should be able to look up from that simple um, lookup table or dictionary and just give me the results without having to rerun the function. So let's now go ahead and bring in our functus. So this is all built into Python. Actually, this series this is about like improving Python, improving writing better Python code. All of this stuff has been using built-in stuff. So all of this comes with Python. If you're using a recent version of Python 3.10, 3.11, 3.9, uh, you should try and watch uh, all of the videos that, that I have on, on this series covering all the different techniques you can use to improve your Python code. And maybe I get to go into the lesser known features that uh, has been there, it's powerful, it's nice, but not many people are aware of it, right? So let's go ahead and just import cache. Now cache is coming from 3.9. So you wanna use 3.9, but before that, I believe in 3.3 or 3.4, there already has been something called the LRU cache. And the LRU cache is the one that implements the memoization. LRU stands for least recently used. And the name sort of give away how it does this memoization. So what it does is it discard the entries that have not been read for a while. So if I have, let's say I have a dictionary of 20 keys, then whenever there is the, out of 20 keys, if I, if I have to memoize a new 
uh, input to an output, then I would discard the one that is least recently used. All right, so that's kind of, that's kind of where the name comes from. And now that we have that, I'm gonna go ahead and just implement it simple. We're gonna say RRU cache, and it used to be that you need to do this, like like uh, call it like a function. So if you read some of the older books, um, there is a very good book on this topic called the Fluent Python. There's a few books on that. Um, they, they will tell you that you need to invoke this as a regular function. So you need to pass in the parentheses and the book make, us, uh, make it quite clear that you need to invoke this just like a regular function. So there is a parenthesis. And the reason for that is because it accepts parameters. But in later version of Python, so if you're watching this video, you're probably on a later version of Python, you don't have to do that anymore. So you can just say LRU cache, all right? And let's go ahead and save all of that. Let's quit out and restart the terminal and clear my screen. Now check this out. If I'm gonna go ahead and say square root four again, well, I'm gonna get a result. Square root five, I'm gonna get a result. Square root six, I'm gonna get a result. But if I try square root four again, notice that, that this is not being printed. You see that? So every time my function is computing, I would actually expect to see this print statement, the, the time it takes, and then the input and the output. And I see that for five, I see that for five, uh, four, I see that for six. But when I do four again, I'm not seeing it. Now let me try, let me try uh, nine. Well, you see that again, right? But if I try six, it's gone. Why? Because it has been computed before. So it sort of memoized this value. It says that every time you give me six, I'm gonna pass you this value, 2.44, uh, 9489742, to all the way to 78. And so, I did not have to recompute this, even though this could be some very expensive computation, I did not have to compute that. I, all I need to do is to remember that every time you give me this input, it would map to this output. So it's a very stable behavior, right? And LRU cache allows you to do a couple of things. Among those things, you could add a max size. You could say how many, what is the length of your cache? So let's, let's, let's put four, right? And it's generally recommended to keep it to a, a value that is a power of two. So two, four, um, 8, uh, 16, 32, 64, 1 to 8, that, that's okay, 2, 5, 6, that's okay, right? Uh, type, I'm going to explain type, but right now let's turn it to true. Let's turn it to true and I'm going to explain that. So let me explain the max size and let me explain the type. And then I'm going to show you a few more more sophisticated examples right now. This is really simple. Uh, you feel like, what, why do we need that? But later on, we're going to go ahead and just import like request. Um, actually, let's do it now. We're going to go ahead and just import like URL lib. Uh, this is also built into Python. And then we're going to use that to do some API requests. And I can show you the difference when you use something like caching with API requests versus not using API requests. I'm going to talk about that, right? So let's go ahead and save all of that again. Let's quit out. And let's run ru.py. All right. So remember, now the only difference from the earlier uh, sort of exercise is now I have a max size, I have to type. So let's talk about max size. Now if I'm gonna go ahead and just do a, let's start from four, then let's start, let's go five, let's go six. Oops, I, I did four, let's go six, then let's do seven. Now notice that right now, I'm already fill up my size of my cache, right? Because I have before, I have four, I have five, I have six, I have seven. So if I were to go ahead and do something like, uh, let me show you if I do something like five. It is still cache. You know this cache because this is not being printed out, meaning the function has not been run, it just memoized. But if I try to do something like eight now, just to max out, just to exceed the size of my cache. So you see that? And now I'm gonna try and say seven. Um, seven is being cached, six is being cached. Four, you see four is now having to recompute. Well, you said, well, earlier though, the four has already been recomputed. Why is it not cached? Well, because you max out the size. So that's kind of the, the how you set up a, a maximum limit. Of course, it goes down to uh, the size of your server as well. You know, if you're running this on a, uh, on a server, you want to be mindful of that. You can so, sort of set it as a none to give it just unlimited, just unlimited size, as long as your machine can handle that, right? We're going to keep to four now. Uh, I want to talk about a type. Now, the type argument, if this is set to true, it stores results of the different arguments typed separately. So it distinguishes between, let's say, float and integer arguments that are normally considered equal. So if I were to do four, you see now it doesn't really have to recompute because it just stored that. But if I were to put 4.0, now four and 4.0 is usually considered equal. They would pass your equality check. But because we say type equals to true, now it would make a uh, differentiation between float and integer arguments. So now I shouldn't expect the memoization to work now. Run that. See, sure enough, it has to recompute that. Even though the end result is the same, 2.0, 2.0. Now a classic example when people talk about memoization and caching and LRU, they like to go into the Fibonacci sequence. So let's take a look at that. Let's implement a simple one. I'm gonna go ahead and just say, um, let's define that first. Let's define
Okay, very simple Fibonacci sequence. You want to also add your time it function, your decorator, and you want to also add your arrow cache. If I don't plan to change the max size and the type, I could just leave out the, the sort of the, the rest of this. I could just say LRU cache, that, that will work. Okay, now I'm going to go ahead and say if name, so it would save me some running. I would say just every time I run a script, just go ahead and do that default. Okay, let's start from six. Okay. I will disable this just to show you the difference and then I will set up the caching again. So let's, okay, this time I'm gonna run it with this being commented out, so there's no caching. Let's run that. So notice what's gonna happen. So first thing is that if you go down from the bottom, it's probably easier to work your way up. So it first compute the six, right? Now, how do you compute six? It says, well, if n is smaller than two, return n, but six is greater than that. So six have to return this. So what does six have to return? Six have to return six minus one and then six minus two. So it has to return this 4, because 6 minus 2 is a 4. Then it has to return um, 6 minus 1, which is a 5, which is something you see right up here. Because um, from 4 itself, it still needs to compute that. It says 4. How do I return 4? Well, 4 minus 2, that's 2, so it has to come from here. And then 4 minus 1, that's a 3, so you can compute here. So if you look at this, and you were to count the number of times that your function have to compute, let's say, f of 1. To compute Fibonacci of 1, um, it needs to compute how many times? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. It needs to compute uh, total Fibonacci 1 uh, 8 times. And then it needs to do the Fibonacci 2 uh, in total 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 times. And then it needs to compute so and so forth. So this is a lot of ways, right? This is a lot of ways. If you were to just add this decorator, which uh, of course you import from here, so from Functools import LRU cache, let's go ahead and see what's the difference. Let's run that. See now, it doesn't have to do that anymore. It says, well, first of all, six would give you eight, but then instead of recomputing four, it just look and say, hey, I did that before. And I remember the value is three, so I memorized that. And I memorized that so I could use that. And so all of them are being computed just one time. And if you don't think this is a big difference, wait till you see a bigger number. So instead of doing something like six, you could do something like 10 and you could try that. Um, let me remove the caching and let me run it for you. You can see this is an endless list is not really endless but like it keeps growing right now to give you a sense of what the value for 30 would be right if the value of 30 would be if you were to cache it makes a total of 31 calls if you were to time it it takes if you were to sum up all the time it would take less than something like 0 0.0005 maybe even lower depending on the computer machine or power it could be way lower than that it could be something like 0 0.005 really 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 quick but if you were to take it on cache if you guess how many calls it has to make, right? The number of calls it has to make is two, six, nine, two, five, three, seven. This is the number of calls it needs to make. And it will take greater than about 20 seconds, depending again on your computer machines. So this is a massive difference between the two, right? One is a cache results, one is uncached results. And so that's really neat, right? It just give you the time, it just give you the LRU cache, uh, you can just import them. So what about this cache then? When do we need to use cache? Now, when you need to use LRU cache, and you plan on using it with a max size of none, which is to say unlimited, and don't limit the size, then there is a short form for that and it's just basically cache. This is the same, this is the same as, let me just say same as just doing a cache. That's it. And this comes from 3.9, right? Um, this is available in Python 3.9. This is quite recent, but if you use Python 3.9, you can put cache, and that will basically give you the same as running this. Okay, I said I'll give you a more real life example of when it's useful. So I'm gonna go ahead and show you a simple URL lead uh, example. So I pasted in an example here. This is a simple example, it says get pep. This is to retrieve text of a Python enhancement proposal. And there is a resource, it says this is the URL. You could actually just um, use the F string for that as well. Uh, we don't need the print statement anymore. This was while I was sort of testing everything. And then what it does is it just use URL lib the request to open that and then read that. If it doesn't, if it doesn't succeed, then it just return not found. All right. If I want to use URL lib request to pull this, right, if, without the caching, you could imagine this being quite a nightmare to do if I have a long list. And I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna say for n in, and I'm gonna add some numbers here. I'm gonna say for eight, ten. I'm gonna actually change, repeat a few numbers. Um, just so you can see the memoization and let's maybe stick with that and I'm gonna say for each one of them what, what do I do? I say get pep so this is the PEP Python Enhancement Proposal so I'm gonna say get pep 
and if you want to see that they're you, you want to see that um, they're actually doing this correctly I basically return the s dot read you can print the length of that so you can just say print the length of that but you could also just sort of print n next to it as well just to make sure that it's you know uh, going through the list correctly let's print that um, I'm gonna run this now and so it's gonna go ahead and do 5 and then 8 and then 5 and then 10 and 8 so each time it goes through each one of them right how many times does it have to run through 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 you have to run through 7 times and I, I can keep adding to the list but what if there are actually some duplicates because this content doesn't really change right? at least not on a day-to-day week-to-week month-to-month basis the, once the content is up there it doesn't really change so I could actually use memoization so I could go ahead now and just add a cache and again it's all as simple as adding cache so I save that now let's run this actually let's put the time it as well at the bottom so let's time it quit run it so you notice that these articles the contents are all being collected and you see them being printed out and that's why you see the print end and all of this is being printed out however you realize that every time after they printed out they would print the end and the length but curiously 10 doesn't get reprinted out why because uh, 10 is basically just from the memoir so it, it doesn't rerun that and we can check for this by looking at get path, which is the name of the function and we can just say something like um, first of all you can try and say cache parameters you can say what are the cache parameters this is also new it's only in Python 3.9 so cache parameters is new in Python 3.9 if you run that mistype there so it says well first of all the parameters is this run with max size of none and type equals to false but the other thing you can do is you can also check for the cache info like this and this is quite interesting because what this is is that in total it will come up to seven but it hits the cache three times why because five Here's a 5, so that's 1, 8, that's an 8, so that's 2, and 10, that's a 10, 3. So in total, it only has to run 4 times because it misses those in the cache. So in, instead of trying to run a massive amount of, let's say this is not 7, this is a long, long, much longer list, uh, you don't have to keep pinging somebody's API and you know using up all your credit if you have to put in a secret key, use up your credit for that, you don't have to do it anymore. All you need to do is to implement some sort of caching and say, hey, if I have pinged this before, just get me the same result. And that about concludes today's lesson. It's about caching, it's about using the LRU. With Python 3.9, the syntax becomes a lot simpler. You can just put a cache and it will do a lot of this for you. And this is how it works behind the scene. And I think, that it has, uh, like I said, I think it has the potential to be your favorite uh, lesser known Python decorator, building decorator. So I uh, hope you enjoyed the lesson. I'll see you in the next video.